Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Grab yourself a cuppa. It's time for more Face It Global Summit as we have concluded game number one so far. And we're going to be moving on into the next couple of games on Miramar in a few moments' time. To my right hand side, I have Toffees. I have Avenger also ready with their cuppas, apparently, here live from London. Gentlemen, so far, so good. Our previous game was where's Rich? It was a bit of a belter, to say the <laughs> least. It was, it was dank. It was, a, it was a great game. Uh, not surprised, honestly, because Liquid have been doing great on Miramar over yeah. I didn't expect them to come out that strong, but in international before, they have been doing really well in the first kind of games. We herald the return of Liquid Mar, yeah. right? Yeah. These guys are they're, they're playing well. They came out blazing. I mean, 12 kills is absolutely bananas, plus the 10 points from coming in in first place. This is genuinely, they could have a mediocre rest of the day, and sure. I think feel very comfortable going into tomorrow. I this Tomorrow, right? sort of used to be Liquid Demo doing very, mm -hmm. very well in a day one, not necessarily yes. doing well later on. Of course, different roster, different time. Uh, however, it is a forebringing of what could potentially occur here today. The problem is, or the good part, is FaZe isn't here to ruin their last day. <laughs> yeah, so. that's true. Now, what's very interesting is that they usually have a bad second day, and yeah. they have day, the day of tomorrow, so the second day is going to go, go off, and they're going to have a good th th third day. So. Perfect for them, right? There you go. Clairvoyant <laughs> premonitions here from the analysis <laughs> desk, which will absolutely probably not be true, but there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah we're gentlemen. usually wrong. <laughs> What came in from you from game one in terms of things that maybe stood out to you after kind of, we've had a long yes. time to speculate as to what we may see coming into this World Championship at the Face of Global Summit. So, A, I want to touch on the fact that the top four teams were from four different regions. Mm -hmm. This yep. is, you know, we had an international at PGL, but the Chinese teams had their own tournament. They sent their sort of second division out. So this is the first time since PGI that the best of the best of the best have been together. Four regions, top four, 28 of the 64 kills yeah. went to the top four teams. Mm -hmm. So these guys came out to play, and I, I can't speak enough about how strong this first game was. Well, guys, let's hear from the group themselves. Group A, of course, coming into the Face It Global Summit. Let's see what they think about the tournament heading in to try and claim themselves a world championship. It's, uh, it's really different playing with uh, players from other regions because everybody has their own sort of style and um, in our region we don't really have any one style, it's a little bit all over the shop. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be different, like the meta is going to be different. You see a different meta in America, Europe, Korea, China, so it's going to be very interesting. I'm not sure what to expect. I think we all expect to get very far in the tournament. Um, it's just pretty much all going to come down to who wins Pachinki. So with the new competitive point system in PUBG, um, there's definitely been a huge focus on getting kills. You can no longer, you know, snake into top five and get a good amount of points and win a tournament. <laughs> My favorite, absolute favorite, is the Aussie mentality. We're kind of all over the shop there, I don't know. We don't really have style. <laughs> right. I love Let's that. Let's do whatever. That's so good. HQ's sinister laugh at the end was also pretty good. You know, the best thing as well is that every single time I cover a game and mm. there's Australians, it's <laughs> it's almost exactly the same mentality across all games. Like, I would say, play, mate. It just, <laughs> just <laughs> I mean, they were in the lobby the night they got here doing shoeies, for crying out loud. Like, these, yeah. guys, these guys are like, they're the rock stars of PUBG, right? They yeah. come out, they, they play hard, they play hard, and they play outside and inside, I guess, better way to say it. Boys, I want predictions, though. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Avenger, putting you on the hot spots. So after I saw what 17 Gaming did, they were playing kind of passive. I'll, uh, I'll actually put it over to uh, a free. Africa, I, I think okay. I think they're going to be doing great this game. I think they're kind of getting into the late game. And if they get into the late game with four guys alive in a good spot, they're going to be playing aggressive as needs to. I doubt your confidence. He whispered Africa. But a, see, I'm going to boldly Africa. say, after eight kills in seventh place, I got to put faith in those NA boys with the huge Miramar performances. I think it's time for them. STK is going to come out on top this time. It's time, time to, to shoot. Okay. I don't know what you're trying to do. Time to shoot. 
to kill. Wow, amazing. Time to shoot to kill. Oh, that's why we don't pay you the big bucks. <laughs> 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 and then I suppose I, I shall also put my kind of cards on the table. I'm going to go for incognito after listening to them in that interview, because let's go Australia. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We are keeping track of these for a little bit of fun as well, so we're going to find out at the end of the tournament who is absolutely and completely wrong. Let's head over to the commentary team for game number two on Miramar Facing Global Summit. Thank you so much, Kolaris. I love the fact that he kind of picks the same way I do. Like, okay, which one does my heart tell me to do? And you could tell <laughs> off the intro to that, he was like, all right, Incognito is like now one of my favorite teams. But my name is Matram, joined here by Paper Then, and we're going to be taking you into game two in just a second. Yeah, I mean, what an exciting game one. Team Liquid there, second place in third person and first person at PGI, mm -hmm. coming out here making a statement in game number one. Boxing in, 17 gaming, not allowing them to really move and rotate. I said I thought maybe 17 might have to rely on their skill. Ibiza just didn't even give them a chance. Ibiza on top of that hill was just the detriment of every other team that was inside of that game. So, there we go. Pretty easy plane path again. It's Miramar. Almost all the plane paths are pretty nice. <laughs> Unless they go really hard to one angle, everything's pretty okay. Yeah, it's just right down the middle. So this should pretty much allow all the teams to get to where they want to go. It looks like the Crusaders are already making an adjustment here, going to Chumacera instead of Monte Nuevo, I think this is a really smart decision on their part. After what happened last round, I would agree. This is the way you want to do it. They necessarily didn't have the best start to that game. Still managed to get themselves in a couple of decent positions, but really just hurt them in the beginning. Oh, no, Abisa. What happened there, man? Oh, Samty took some damage there. He fell over. Looks like they should be able to get the res onto him, I believe, because Spartan is taking off there. So it's one knock under the belt, but not the end of the world. Now, one really interesting thing that I want to note here on the map that I'm seeing is that Crystal is that the, the, the Crystal Luster is down on the south end of the map this time. Last time they were up in the north end at Al Azahar, they've completely changed what? their location. What again with the circle? Okay, oh, I'm used to casting NPL, where we're always down in the south, like the southwestern part of this. Apparently, the face it circles are all just going to go northeast. This is <laughs> I'm calling it now. This seems to be our new home two times in a row. This is crazy. I mean, it's it, it's almost an identical to circle to what we saw yeah. last time, a little further north, but pretty much about the same. So AHQ, you know, they've got to like this. They they've got to try to take more advantage of it this time. Last time they weren't able to quite do much with it. They kind of got caught out in transition and lost some of their members very early on. So Team Liquid here just moving around Picado. Nothing too exciting going on yet. I'd say that right now to me the biggest change here is, you know, Crystal Luster. I mean, they're at them, and uh, we've got the Crusaders have done a little bit of a switch. Really, the thing that I want to keep an eye on are all the teams that are smack dab in the middle of the map, right next to the circle. We've got 4 a.m., we've got a Freak of Freaks, Team Liquid, MP5, Cloud9, uh, Armory Gaming. You can see they're all just clustered right around each other. And sure, they're going to rotate out, but really, you can't rotate when you've got somebody that's 200 meters away from you in every direction. What I'm really curious about is if these teams that are on the western edge of this map, if they paid attention to what happened last time, because one thing I was really keeping my eye on was if anybody would take a long rotation around the north, past El Pozo, up towards La, La Cobria. Nobody did that last round. So I'm curious if somebody came in, if a coach came in or something like that and said, hey guys, no one took this path last time. It's very safe. There was nobody on that northern half of the map for quite a long time. Look at this. Duckman's aware of where Cloud9 likes to rotate to, getting a little bit of information there. Still kind of looking around, seeing if anybody else is around. Does spot out K-Mine. It's a pretty long-range shot with an iron sight. But let's be honest, these are some of the best players in the world right now. So uh, not necessarily too afraid of iron sight shots. But K-Mine finally found himself a toy that he wants to play with. <laughs> He's got that mini. Ooh, Duckman getting some really nice shots here on the K-Mine with those iron sights there. There's this two. guy had three kills last round, and he is he is a monster. They are running down the hillside after K-Mine. you got Lobes that's trying to take a couple of shots. It's a long cross that they're going to have to make. K-Mine wants to know. No part of this. He's got some grenades, no meds really to work with. He's just praying the fact that his teammates can protect him. But on the other side of it, we've got Profi that's having to take a couple of shots at MP5. Everybody's just kind of swarming around this kind of split loot lo location that Cloud9's running right now. Yeah, once again, Armory Gaming here being aggressive. The Thailand team trying to find some early kills. They picked off NN from a Freak of Freaks Fatal last round. This time they are on the prowl trying to close in on C9. They're moving away from the circle. They are very happy to chase down K Mind here, who is very, very hurt, trying to get to the safety of his other team members. Meanwhile, you can see MP5 is moving in into this party as well. So this could be some early fighting here that maybe we weren't expecting. 
We're going to go ahead and jump in the Murado. This is um, slightly scary, to say the least, whenever you have this many people stacked in a Murado. Murados are known for being a, a touch front heavy as you're trying to cross through Miramar here. Uh, <laughs> then we might have seen a couple of rolling Murados in the history of PUBG. <laughs> I call it the clown car, when you have to put all four members of your team in the same vehicle. But here we got a little bit of uh, action we got going on as DMG decided that he knocked himself as he was jumping out of the vehicle. That should be enough space to allow K-Mine to at least get away. Meanwhile, MP Five's Murado still making their way back down towards the south right now. I think that they're going to make their way over next to Leo, their last member, and it looks like he's got his own vehicle. This is going to be a very interesting rotation coming through. Yeah, this is what we saw last game where they ran into Incognito right there yeah. to the west of Los Leones, and it looks like we might have a similar situation again. Curious to see how this one will come out. Incognito kind of setting up on the road here, changing vehicles. They're taking some shots from, the, I believe that's the Crusaders out of the long range there, but they are able to get away safely, and it looks like they want no business fighting MP5 out here. Incognito looked like they were thinking about taking a couple of shots back over towards MP5, but yeah, as you said, Brazilian Crusaders, just a couple of shots down that hillside convinced them to hop inside their vehicle and move. But we've got uh, Mental over here looking back over towards Arrow Wolf. They're going on a very long rotation off in the distance, catching a little bit of air on the motorcycle. Again, just having some fun over back over towards the east here as Team Liquid also on the move already. Yeah, Team Liquid this time rotating into the southwestern corner of the circle. They have the closest route to it. They know there's probably not too many people up there. Entz is up there. It looks like Envy is moving up here. Moody coming across Mikaz. Mikaz can't quite the angle, but he knows the other members are coming. Trying to get the rip here with the AK. Does a little bit of damage. Does not opt to go for the finish here as he's taking some damage himself. Moody jumped out of this vehicle. Took a couple of shots back over towards Squeaky. Looking back over towards Moody. Got the down onto it. Look at Pat Caps just roll in. Jumps up using the vehicle for some cover, but it doesn't matter. Squeaky managed to get another one off of it. Mikas is just going for the flushes out on two members of Envy. That was pretty brave to try to protect your teammate in that spot, and it does not pay off for Envy. A very dangerous rotation here for Envy. Pat Caps, he is uh, pretty much screwed behind that, so that, that yeah. particular uh, rock there. That, that smoke is not going to last too much longer. And The other members of Envy are already out, so two members gone for Envy early on. Other teams making their rotations. You can see a Freaker Freaks Fatal up in their north. Here's uh, Trifelli. He's looking to finish that, but Squeaky finishes it anyway. Hey, easy friends, just looking back over here like, man, I, I appreciate you bringing me some vehicles. <laughs> I, I think I, I'm going to use those at some point. Got a little motorcycle dropped off there, whereas going to raid the rest of the crew. You want to make their way up towards the north now, but we got MP5. They managed to make their way inside the safe zone now and just kind of playing along the top of these hills. Remember, we were talking about this in the last round. It's two different ways to kind of play. You kind of go for the safety of buildings or you go for the top of those hills and just try to get as much information as you possibly can. Right, exactly. And it looks like MP5 is going to try to play the edge game here. You can see here on the left side of your screen, C9 and Armory Gaming both making that long rotation that I was talking about. This is a relatively safe rotation if they don't run across to Freak of Freaks Fatal coming in. You can see Duckman's is up there. They were over there next to Picado way off to the east a little while ago. How are these guys just keep rotating right next to each other? But we've got Incognito taking a couple of shots at Tripoli. E. Makes his way up that hillside. I mean, that's the Bronco. That's essentially a tank on this map. It can just take so much damage. Yeah, it's already smoking. It doesn't look like it's smoking too much. They took a little bit of damage there in transition. Profi trying to get some shots onto Armory Gaming, but he does not land any there. Armory still on the move here. Duckman's now. It looks like Armory Gaming they, might be setting up a pick here. They're just playing leapfrog at this point. They move forward a little bit. One guy jumps out, takes a couple of shots. The other team, the other team hops in their vehicles, rotates up, and now has a couple of shots thrown their way. So here we go. We've got DMG taking the shots at Cloud9. We've got Nerf that's going to go up around the other hillside, but a couple of different angles that we can see Armory gaming taking the shots from, but now there's nobody around them. They make their way back to their vehicles and rinse repeat. Yeah, it's kind of the danger of setting up a pick outside of the circle. If you can rip the other team out of the vehicle, you know, that's free points for you, basically. But if the other team gets ahead of you, that means they can play gatekeeper and prevent you from getting into the circle. So a little bit of a risk being taken here by Armory Gaming, and this is Entz making their rotation. Yeah, nothing too terribly crazy going on. We got Crystal Luster that's outside the blue zone right now, but they should be able to make their way up towards it. You can see a lot of teams not necessarily wanting to go up towards the north, really. It's just a little bit north of center, but with Crude Val, we've got Terra Branca, all that other area. They're just like, nope, just please circle, don't go in that direction. But me, being who I am, that's where I wanted to go. I want to see another messy rotation. <laughs> yeah. I, that always makes me happy. <laughs> I know it's kind of hard to rotate from the northern part of this map, coming down those lines. Yeah. It, it is a little more difficult, but there's just nobody up there. It's so safe. It feels like somebody should at least try it, and the circle just goes dead center. Well, get ready for a very 
calm circle. Not, <laughs> nobody's really going to have to move too much, really. It's just the latecomers, and this is the, kind of the downside whenever you do play edge, and everything goes due center. Where do you go? They naturally don't necessarily know that the north is the most open spot to go through, but you have to make that assumption. Based off of the funneling points that come into play, we got Incognito. Well, a couple of bullets coming his way from Rogi, but I think the Broncos should be able to speed up and finally get away from it, as it's going to be also OP Rangers taking a couple of shots. Incognito, mental, uh, mental getting a nice shot there. Yeah, mental with a nice scar rip there. That's a pretty decent distance that he got that knock from and the confirmed kill as well. Venerated here taking some shots at Squeaky. Squeaky forced to get out of his vehicle, running up the hill. Looks like, ooh, get over. He will make it. Venerated almost goes down himself. Venerated wanted that. That was a little bit of vengeance back over towards Ince, but not going to get it as AHQ is going to take a couple of pot shots up on those high ground spots. We were talking about it. We've got Arrow Wolf on the other side of this, so that's really just going to force them down. That grenade could land back down over there. Nah, I think it's going to bounce off the other direction, Ooh. so it should be fine. Uh, but Darrow's not necessarily too happy down where he's at right now. Going to go ahead and throw out the smokes, maybe try to protect the vehicle a little bit. That grenade really had a lot of rubber on it. It really bounced. I didn't think it would bounce quite that far. It almost landed there. All right, here come the Crusaders. Coming across a lot of fire. There are a lot of teams that are trying to rotate oh. through 4 a.m. Getting gripped by Purdy Curdy, but they were able to get out. Got 4 a.m. with the rotation off over there. Tad, the shots come their way. That's one of the things I like about 4 a.m. Whenever they have their shots come their way, they stop and they're like, did you just shoot at us? And they're going to look back over there. Cloud9 still with Armory. These guys have been doing this for a while. I mean, we talked about it beforehand. They'll hop in their vehicles, re position and it's just again there's no other way to describe it. it's like a leapfrog style situation and they aren't afraid they'll just stay right next to each other but we got ins taking a couple of shots back over towards several teams right now as they're they're kind of due up in the center of the circle yeah it looks like they've covered a lot of territory with a 1-3 split here Mikaz up on the northern end to the west of Al Azahar here comes Armory Gaming into the uh, oh, the water nine. treatment here but they're gonna have to go through because the circles already moved and they've still got C9 kind of with them and Duckman once again wants wants to try to rip the C9 members out of the vehicle, but he can't get the shots. I, I, guys, I, I'm willing to bet you were all surprised that that happened there, that somebody stopped and was getting ready to take <laughs> shots at each other between these two squads. I, I love how Cloud9, we saw Profi just a second ago in the interview being like, oh yeah, you know, there's other North American teams that are more aggressive than us, and they have been fighting this team for like the past five minutes. Yeah, this team from Thailand proving to be way more aggressive than probably anything they're quite used to, and they really want these kills, but right now Armory Gaming just can't seem to quite land anything. And going to end up over here next to MP5 potentially, so going to have to see how that goes. So Incognito taking a couple of shots back over towards Brazilian Crusaders. The Brazilian Crusaders does get dropped by Waikikamukau, which is one of the funnest names to say. That, it's the best. It's it the is. best name in this tournament. <laughs> Waikikamukau, just so funny. Brazilian Crusaders, they were the first team to go out in that last round, and they've got, they managed to get the res back up, but you can see Incognito, no real fear coming into their eyes. They talked about it. They just kind of play their own way and do whatever they want to do and it looks like right now they want to push for this couple of shots now coming back out he's got the rock in between him this is a pretty long range grenade but could have a lucky bounce with it we'll have to see as it's going to land right up in the doorstep but not going to be able to get anything out of it yeah the crusaders are able to fall back into this shack so it's going to take a grenade through the window here from why kick a mukau mm -hmm. that one's in the back doesn't do much their grenade's still bouncing all over the place here oh okay rusty zera took a little damage from one of them there but look at why kick a mukau is using it for cover and is the whole time just just pushing forward and pushing forward. Insight still has their grenade prep. This is a lot of utility being used at the time for it. So here we go. Why kick a Mukau on the flank? Does spot out one of them, gets the spray down. Now gonna try to transfer it back up, but nowhere to go as the smoke's gonna provide a little bit of cover. This is a three-man push coming out from Incognito as they lost one earlier, but two members already down for the Brazilian Crusaders. Yeah, this was a 3v4 to start. The Incognito got one knock, decided to start pushing aggressively off for it, and now they've got two knocks. They're looking to get through. Move. Oh, FPS, he's down. He managed to get something out of that. Raspu is the last guy alive, but it does not matter. As you can see, Incognito just pushed through them with no fear. Cloud9 now looking back over towards the Freak of Freaks. I think they managed to get it down onto Lambu just a second ago. Yes, they did. So, and a pretty comfortable spot, but again, not inside the safe zone. Yeah, Freak of Freaks pretty spread out here. Now they've got two members knocked. NN is down on top of that hill as well. We're jumping over with Team Liquid, who is trying to put some shots onto that team that we saw them face at the end of round number 117. Abiza 
up there looking to try to put more damage into 17. So you got a little bit of deja vu going on, but we have a, I would say, pretty nice crate just sitting here, but it's kind of hidden from a lot of different teams. I don't think that 4AM might have vision on this, so I'm not sure if they're going to make a stop for it, but really, look at the Northwest. It's starting to turn really clustered up there. we got Shoot to Kill, Cloud9, a Freaker Freaks, MP5, all pushing on that general location. We've got Armory Gaming. They're going to have to make a pick. If they opt into going north, they could run right into a death trap up yeah, there. Yeah, and I saw uh, Crystal Luster on our map. They are rotating out through the blue in the circle. This is actually very common for them to do. They did this a lot in the Chinese leagues. The only reason you didn't see this last game was because they dropped El Azahar and the circle was basically right on top of them. They love to make these late, try to make you know safe rotations as best as they can, but they've got OP Rangers on the side. Meanwhile, we've got Entz here trying to fight 17 as well. So 17 between uh, possibly Team Liquid and Entz. Oh, this is a rough spot for them. They're just trying to peek back over this, figure out exactly where the approach could come from. Ents does have a nice little defile that they can play from. So looking back over onto this, I keep saying defile, but really it's kind of a cliffside in Miramar, right? <laughs> definitely it's kind of like more a little dip. You know, we throw that around a lot, and whenever we talk about PUBG, it's kind of more of a little descending dip that you can play inside of. But these are like more like cliffs. I've always got different little words, like I say, like nook and cranny or gully, like the it, it, and they're all kind of the same thing to me. They're just like dips in the ground. <laughs> But it's good to have a wide variety of ways to describe it, right? Especially on Miramar, because there are quite a few of them. And here we go. We've got Team Liquid looking back over towards Armory Gaming. Not going to be Cloud9 that's the going after him this time, but MP5 just up towards the north of it. So that's going to be Abisa going ahead and getting him his first kill of the round. But James also wants to join in, and that's going to be Armory Gaming getting eliminated in 15. Yeah, Armory Gaming just to, trying to take these early fights, and so far it hasn't worked out for them. So they do go down as our first team here in game number the two. And the circle goes to the northwest. Western edge, so centered around SDK, that's got to make the NA fans happy. We got, we actually have Shoot to Kill and Cloud9 over here right next to each other. So with this, look at this, I'm just looking back over towards, oh, Crystal Luster had just near on no life. So as he hits that wall, the extra little bit of damage knocks him, and it's just points delivered right out for Arrow Wolf. Yeah, Arrow Wolf there just gifted a kill from Weishi of Crystal Luster. Okay, MP5 trying to push up on the Team Liquid a little bit here. Spartan backing off, though, doesn't feel confident in that position. I mean, they are a little closer to the circle, so it might be better for them to just try to get in at this Well, it's point. one of those kind of dangerous fights because they've got a cut just a couple of seconds before the circle starts to shrink down. That's putting in yourself into a dangerous spot and then you're just going to take blue damage to go for it. Instead, reposition, try to keep an eye out where they come from. But, oh, a freak of freaks trying to protect Sile over there. I don't think that they're going to be able to get the res onto it, but at least make Purdy Curdy regret having to try to go for that peak. Yeah, this has been a bit of a disaster here for the freaks. They are three people down, basically. Style is dead to rights. There he goes. He will go down. And it's just Shadow left. No, what's funny is this. This is pretty typical of Freak of Freaks Fatal. Shadow is almost always the last player left for them. He has the longest average life for them over the course of the PKL this year. So it's pretty hilarious that once again, he's there. So we have a little bit of trouble could be coming from Insway. They're trying to make their way up that hillside, but they do have Liquid on one side of it just unloading on that angle. But they have Incognito that's kind of like way back behind him. Look, Ronan way back over there. So with this, we're going to have to keep an eye on how it goes. Last two members of Envy also getting caught up into a little bit of a skirmish with Insight. Incognito is kind of separated out inside of their position right now. They've got one man way up in the face, and that's a beautiful grenade coming out from Venerated. Insight taking a lot of damage. It looks like might be prepping another one. This could land right up in his face, and yes, it does. Insight gets knocked off of that. Now it's just onto Ronan, but nowhere around here does Envy know that it's just a one, but look at this Crystal Luster walking right up into Arrowwolf's face. This grenade could be huge. Spins on how it bounces and rolls. Now it's just Zygon, last person left. Yeah, it's just a one. Two members left here for the Arrow Wolves. RDK does get knocked, so Crystal Luster on the aggression here. It is just up to Exagon. Oh, he does get the res on the Katao, though, so they get the knot onto Aisho. Here comes Gongtuo. He's trying to come up here. There's two members. I don't know if they know Exagon is there. He gets one, but does get knocked himself. Here we go. We are in 1v1 style situation on this angle. Long steps up, and there we go. Man, just to take them down, so Crystal Luster does eliminate Arrow Wolf there, so a little bit of a fight happening on the other side of his HQ getting caught up into a skirmish, just trying to flush out the line. One of the members of OP Rangers are right next to him trying to feed information over to a teammate, but it is just back and forth as everybody is just trying to at least get a foothold inside of this new safe zone. Nice reposition coming out from DG as he manages to take down CC. Yeah, two members of OP Rangers inside the house now. 
trying to bait AHQ into them. They need to defend here. They've already lost one member in mental. They're all-star, the MVP from the PKL. One member down here for AHQ. CC looks like he will surely go down, and he does. The other two members of AHQ over in this little blue house. So I'm curious to see how the OP Rangers opt to approach this situation because they've got, it, it looks like it's a 2v2 over here. I'm kind of curious. There was three members left for OP Gaming Rangers, but maybe the other one went down somewhere. I missed them on the map. Uh, it was while they came in. They made the approach. One of the members got dropped off of it. So, no, actually, no. There he is. He's, Tamari is way up in the north. What, is, what, what are, you, are doing? you doing? Apparently, him and Shadow just have decided that they're, they're up here in London just having a little bit of a break, having some tea, <laughs> hanging out, just kind of chit-chatting up there. So, here we go. New circle has popped, and this is kind of a rough circle. It's got the... There's not a lot of, like, easy places to hide at. Sure, there's a couple of dips and dodge places that they can hang out at, but not enough for 12 teams. So, it's going to get really violent really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. We're jumping over here with 17 games. Gaming, trying to keep Entz out of the circle, and Entz is in the meantime in a bit of a skirmish here with Team Liquid. Some damage coming down to Ibiza and Jemti, but they're able to... Oh, he squeaky does get that nice mini 14 shot onto Ibiza, who is knocked there behind that tree. But they do have the smoke up, Jemti going for the res here. This is just a matter of time is what it feels like. Liquid is in a lot of trouble. There's Entz right over here next to them. There's 17, and then you can see it's just Ibiza down. We've got Jemti. I think these are the last two members that are up for Team Liquid at the time and it's just shots that are raining down inside the smoke they can maybe reposition back out but then there's just 17 holding another angle onto it mp5 wants to kind of join up in the party kind of sneaking their way right over there next to him actually might run right up next to their smokes so with this we can see that the res does come through abisa is up and out but look we've got mp5 right on the other side of this hill yeah mp5 here spreading out fanning out but they're getting in their vehicles i'm not too sure they feel like fighting team liquid at this point team liquid down to two members abisa getting knocked again by Squeaky, who's just got the sights on him. Jemti, the last member left here. He is taking a lot of damage against Spartan. Oh. Does get the knock, though, onto Spartan. Is he going to be able to finish it? Not quite. Oh, okay. Looks like somebody else. It's Profi over oh. there who took that kill from Jemti. Oh, all the work that Jemti's putting in. He just wants to get a point. He knows he's in trouble, but that does actually force MP5 to reposition out and away a little bit. Leo still looking on the other side of that, but again, it's assistance coming by from other angles, and Jemti manages to take down Miss You. He managed to get the flush onto it as well. So now it is essentially a 1v1 between Jemti and Leo, just as long as we ignore all the potential third parties that could come <laughs> into play. Yeah, Jemti doing a really great job here, picking up a few extra points for Team Liquid all by his own. That is such a difficult oh, thing to do, but Leo that. does get him there. Nice shooting underneath the vehicle there by Leo. That just was catching tricksy. the foot. <laughs> I like that. That was a really tricksy shot there. So here we go. We've got 10 teams, 26 alive. AHQ is running right up into Taro, the last member for Envy. He's just trying to get the spray on a one, which he does. The vehicle explosion comes out. S SR has near on no life, but Terrell's just trying to go for the flush onto it. Is he going to spot him out? The vehicle's rolling back and providing cover for <laughs> SR. The vehicle explosion <laughs> actually pays off and provides HQ a little bit of space and cover. That is amazingly lucky for SR. He was almost dead to rights oh. there. Interrogates grenade, though. Looks pretty decent. Too oh, far. it went too far. SR wisely here crawling up. I got baited. I thought he was back behind that, and Terrell did too. So SR, though, I don't think it's going to pay off for you. As you can see, there's a lot of shots coming up from different angles. New Circle has popped, and look at that. We've got Shoot to kill up on top of that ridge with a beautiful sight line, but it's going to be 17 running right up back behind Ince as Ince is looking back over towards 4 a.m. and everything else. Are they going to hear these footsteps? Are they too loud with their shots? Here come Shocks looking right up next to it. Going to spot out Speaky. Also sees out Trifelli on the other side of it, and there we go. The trap is unleashed as 17 managed to get two downs off of that off of Why? Why? Just looking back over to him. Mikas off on another angle. Here comes a long-range grenade back over from it. If that connects, this could be terrible for Ents. Great flank there by YY to get those first two knocks on to Ents. Squeaky down here as well. Trifelli will be confirmed by another nice grenade from YY. Squeaky getting taken out as well. YY throwing some more grenades. Looking to get aggressive here on to Ents, but he's taking some shots oh. from long range. And oh my goodness, YY absolutely on fire with these grenades. 17 just walks up and denies anything from Ents. They were all caught up in that long range skirmish and 17's like, no, you should have been watching that flank should have been waiting for it so they do get control of that
that, but there's nowhere really for them to go now as so many teams are already moving in. You can see Shadow was thinking about making an approach over here. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a lot of members of Shoot to Kill. I don't want to go that way. Yeah, no reason for him to do that. This is a perfectly safe spot for him to be in. He just needs to prone, try to get as many placement points for his team as he can. He ended up killing Tamaria when they were up there all by themselves a long time ago. So now he's got that northern edge of the circle. SR here looking to do some work, but now it's Babo taking shots into C9. He does get a knock here. Other members of C9 trying to provide cover. Oh, Whoa. that grenade! That was a huge nade. You see, he turns back around and is like, okay, I don't want anything to do with this. Cloud9 under a little bit of pressure from different angles. You can see Shoot to Kills just playing along the little ridges. This hill is very interesting as there's so many little dips inside of it. But 4M looking back up towards 17. We talked about they have a difficult cross and you can see what it looks like. There is near on nowhere for them to go as they just crash into the other side of it. Now just trying to make their way up next to this hillside using the something for cover, but there's just nowhere to go. 17 just absolutely getting torn apart by three different teams. Now look at this split Whoa. from 4 a.m. Oh my goodness. All right, Proppy does get knocked himself. SDK in a battle with another NA team. K-Mine coming up, trying to get the spray. He does land it. Knocked down is Adam. Will confirm the kill. He's trying to come over the hill. Nerf, though, taking some damage from other members of SDK. Oh, and he gets Purdy Curdy. Now we've got Nerf playing along the side of it. This was a beautiful trap sprung by Cloud9, approaching on two different angles. Really, it's just uncivil. Way back over there, one of the last remaining, or actually the last remaining member, as everybody else is going to bleed out for a shoot to kill. Cloud9 took some damage on that approach as well. Really mutually assured destruction coming out from both those teams, but you can see God V, he still knows there's a 17 member around here. He wants something out of this slowly creeping up onto it. Keep in mind we do have four angry men. The last, I think that they're the last team with four people up and active inside of the squad, so a lot of little remnants from other squads are around from them at the time as Nerf went for a little bit of a peek and got punished for it, but God V actually gets down and flushed by shoot. A little bit over aggressive here from 4AM. They were really far apart from each other in a 2-2 split. The other members of 4AM were coming up, trying to finish off these fights on the northern end of the circle, but with Godby going down, this has kind of scared them a little bit, and now they're backing off. Forever landing a couple shots onto Shu here, and he's looking over to OP Gaming Rangers. He's know they're, he knows they're there. They landed that grenade earlier that almost took out Babo that we saw. Another crate coming down as ZG is moving up towards it. He knows Shu is up on that hill. None of the solos are really wanting to take any shots right now. They don't want to give away their position, and this is just paying off for 4 a.m. They're managing to get so much control of this area. As you can see, it's going to be a crate landing right next to him. The parachute's kind of hanging off the side as it does whenever it hits one of those hillsides, slowly creeping down off of it. But Shu, he's, he's the last guy up and alive, and there's so many teams around him right now. He's got, what, I think it's four different, or three different teams within 50 meters around him. And 4 a.m. wants to make their way up that hillside. They really just want to bottleneck it and force it to where all the other teams can't really easily move forward because they have so many other control points on this part of the map. Right, exactly. I mean, I like what 4 a.m. is doing here. I like the aggression. At this point, Shadow and C9 have to wait for this battle to start between Shu and the other members of 4M. Oh, Shu getting a couple nice rips there. ZG is able to safely back out, but Shu does take some damage himself. Other members taking some shots here. C9 does take out Shadow. That means a Freak of Freaks Fatal goes down in sixth place. Cloud9 up to 10 kills. 4AM up to 7 right now. A lot of points for both of these teams, and I gotta say that's Cloud9 and uh, 17 both making their second reappearance into this top five. They're starting to stack up some placement for points as well as grenades starting to come out. Shu doesn't have too many places to hide, but somehow managing to dodge that first grenade does not dodge the second one, and 17 gets eliminated. Look at all the grenades. That's three different angles that were coming after Shu. There was nowhere to go, buddy. <laughs> Poor Shu. Yeah. Just 17 just got trapped between three different teams there. All the credit in the world to Shu to stay alive as long as he did, but he does end up going down. down. Now it's 4 a.m. versus C9 up here in the north. Uh, OP Gaming Rangers are content to just hang out in their hut. They don't want to get involved, and we've got F one member of AHQ SR down in the south. Don't forget about Forever over there. He's up on that hillside on the other side of this, kind of protecting the other two members as they're just kind of running amok and doing whatever they want to. He's got that high ground to kind of look down and protect his teammates. Cloud9, though, starting to make the push right back over to him, so this could end up with a very interesting little fight if Forever sees him. Looks like he's going ahead and prep the grenade. He's rotating between the two. He looks like he does spot out Cloud9, just not certain which weapon he wants to use to go after him yet. And yeah, look for the reposition coming out of this. This could be really bad for Cloud9. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cloud9, though, getting some nice shots. Couldn't quite connect with those can K mines. So forever able to get back behind that tree. Now, I think the OP Gaming Rangers, they need to wait for this fight to start and rotate. In fact, DG98, right away, as soon as he heard those shots, he gets moving. He knows that he to get safely into this circle, he has to wait for Cloud9 and 4 a.m. to start fighting. Oh, this is so dangerous. The grenade's going to roll back down the hillside. K mine takes a little bit of damage, but here comes ZG taking down as he makes that a push. Look at
look at Nerf trying to fight the captain on the other angle for this. K-Mine does go down onto it, so it's just Nerf holding this angle. Really, 4AM can get control over so much of the circle if they can get this. Nerf aware that he's probably going to have a couple of people pushing back behind him, but we've got the OP Rangers that are actually going to come up and assist, taking a couple of shots at 4AM. The aggression starting to backfire just a touch for him. Babo stealing that kill onto K-Mine from 4AM there. Really smart timing here by the OP Gaming Rangers. They are pushing in at just the right time. They're able to get some shots down. They almost got the rip from DG98 onto the member of AHQ that was on the side of the hill. I believe it was Captain now. SR playing very smart as well here, waiting for the right moments, waiting for the other teams to fight before he makes his rotation. Look at this. Everybody else is after cover, and we've got 4AM. It's like, no, I just need this one smoke, and I'm going to shoot everybody else around me. Nerf, got to get a little bit more meds up. As you can see, grenades are starting to land over next to him. 4AM now, three man strong, regrouped around it. They're just going to hunt as they make their approach. A couple, I got another smoke that's coming out. We've got SR way off in the distance. <laughs> He's really distracting right now because OP Rangers keeps looking back over there. And here we go. We are in phase nine. Smack dab in the middle of the circle is where the game is going to end at. So all the teams should have a good idea on where everybody are. They've been taking a lot of shots back and forth with each other. Nerf right on the edge of that blue, going to have to be very, very careful. Really, it's just this ridge that's separating and giving him some type of space. Yeah, here we go. And here's the rest of the utility. Babo still has some frag grenades, throwing them into that middle of that smoke, but 4AM wisely moving around the right <laughs> side of the hill here because they can't quite get over the hill to see them. This is a really interesting maneuver here from 4AM, using the smokes as distraction to kind of bait out those grenades. Exactly. It's a huge mind game. They're just having everybody use their grenades down inside the smoke and they're not even anywhere near it. So ZG looking back over towards OP Rangers. Got the down onto one of them. But look at this. SR comes alive on another angle trying to provide some assistance. Nerf gets the shots onto one of them but gets taken down inside of the exchange. So with this we've got HQ on the other side of this. Forever has taken a lot of damage. Captain is down at the time. ZG looking back on this other angle. So it is a 2v1. They can't really risk taking the time to try to get the res onto it. But look 4am. No fear in their eyes as they are just charging through using smokes for cover back and forth and look at the gun in his hands if you want to end up in a close range battle that is the way you want to go that is just bullets for days as now sr very aware the push is coming for him trying to find out which angle he's got to peek from he has to fight this so differently he's got just the tree and it's his only cover piece for him can push from two different sides there's nowhere for him to really go he has to hit the shots he has to take down one of them so that way he can protect the other angle he just actually abandons the tree decides to just run up and forward and he gets taken down as 4am gets themselves the round victory 4am with some great aggressive play that they're in a really impressive 12 kill win for them they split apart so like early in that circle i think it was like phase seven or eight they had this huge 2-2 split and i'm thinking to myself Wow, will this actually work? And they made it work because they timed their aggression correctly. They were able to push up and completely cut off those teams in the north. Well, we talk about how Forium tends to play really aggressively. And, you know, if you predominantly only watch like North America or EU and this is your first taste of how like, the competitive meta happens in other regions, here you go. Here's a good idea. Let's just walk into the middle of the circle and just start fighting anything that moves around us just because we think we can kill them and we know we can kill them. Yeah, all the credit in the world to SR here to pull out a second place. Only one kill for them, but hey, SR, great job being the sneaky snake here, finding a way to at least make it to the end there for AHQ and some much needed points. But once again, we're seeing C9 in the top yep. five. OP Gaming Rangers having a nice game here and 17 as well. 17, Cloud9, they're starting to reappear very regularly on these Miramar maps. And let's be honest, Cloud9 got a ton of kills out of that. K-Mine walking away with five. And back behind that, we got to also give a big shout out to ZGG. He walks away with five kills as well. Yeah, some really big rounds for them. We didn't get to see the same kind of thing out of Team Liquid. They got caught kind of early in yeah. transition, stuck between some teams like Ents and MP5, so they weren't quite able to make it work. They did get a few kills again, yeah. so they're still doing pretty well, but the consistency we're seeing from 17 and C9 is quite impressive so far. I mean, it, that was a very interesting round coming out from Cloud9, all things considered, because we saw them get caught up in that fight with Armory Gaming that was just move forward, take a couple of shots, the other team moves forward, and they were just kind of going back and forth with it. And that just gives you an idea on how much utility that they had to work with through the entirety of this game, because it was just back and forth with them all the way through this they were never afraid to take any fights yeah props to them because that's yeah. a really difficult situation to be in because you're coming into the circle late there's a lot of fighting going on you're taking damage your vehicles are taking damage so you're already at a bit of a disadvantage coming in at the end so oh, you have to give a lot of credit to c9 here they yeah. are playing very well today I, I do but also at the same time what I, i'm from north america shoot to kill cloud nine why'd you have to fight yourselves <laughs> moving into that last little bit of the circle man what what oh 
my hopes and dreams just <laughs> dashed right there. But this is again, Cloud Nine, great performance coming through. They like weakened each other, and then just everybody else is like, oh, I can kill you now. Well, this is how I felt when Afrika Freaks Fatal and OP Gaming Rangers Shadow and Temeria were up there all by themselves on the north end. I'm like, oh man, like come on guys, like can we not fight each other? Like, <laughs> yeah, see, we're we're the international caster pair here. We like we got a whole bunch of the EU guys. I, I see Kolaris and Avenger over there smiling, looking back over there like, nah, North American <laughs> bum gee, meh, 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 meh. Toffee's got to protect us, but naturally got Pansy and Sims that are going to be casting following this up as well. Yeah, absolutely. So they're going to bring that EU flair. So, <laughs> so if you guys are like, ah, oh, these casters are so biased, don't worry. You guys are going to get some EU bias coming in a minute. That'll be fine. Yeah, it's about time we get some KR bias coming in here, man. We have been one of the strongest regions in the world. I mean, they were the top two teams at PAI 2019. Mm -hmm. They won TPP back at PGI. I mean, I know that's not nearly as competitive a format as FPP. Now we're in FPP. They're, they're good, man, and it, I, they're playing all right. It just makes somebody from Korea, it makes my soul happy hearing you say, oh, yeah, well, you know, 3PP, it's not as competitive first person. Thank you. <laughs> Join us. Welcome to the party. They've been converted as well. All the uh, Korean yeah, teams yeah. have admitted it. So. Every, everybody is on first person across all of the leagues worldwide right now, so I'm just glad that I was kind of worried there for just a second. All right, well, I think we're about to jump over to a player from 4AM. Let's get, get over there. That is exactly right, guys. Yes, I am joined by the winning side 4M and Godfi here. So first of all, how was the team feeling coming off that win? That was pretty impressive. Uh, he said it was uh, the feeling was pretty great because at the beginning of this event he can uh, have a, ch a, a chicken dinner, uh, there will be less stress. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was just going to talk about that previous game that we saw. You guys didn't place very highly. What changed coming into the second match? Oh, because uh, he, they know pretty much about this security circle. The time when this security circle went to the northeast, uh, at that moment they knew every uh, position other teams are, so they know uh, quite better about each other, so they can uh, get this uh, chicken dinner. So I just want to talk about that final fight against AHQ, that last remaining player. Can you talk me through that? What went down there? How did you manage to close it out? Uh,就是怎么做出的那个转变？在那个时呃时刻是怎么想的？然后呃怎么又做出了这样的一个决定的？呃，那个时候在我们在上一个圈的时候就已经想好了，下一个圈行是这样子的话，我们就怎么样去
And I think that you bring right, it up. Circle. It was looking down at that river, right? We saw that when C9 tried to clear them out. We got a little bit of C9's play earlier. Yeah. yeah. But they, 4AM used that peak advantage. When C9 popped up over the top, they have a fraction of a second where sort of nerf is at a disadvantage compared to them. And they were able to take them out. So they did a good job of spotting, using the moments when other teams were starting to peak and locate to just eliminate threats. Good job, they had a ton of smokes as well. Because if they <laughs> yeah, did, it was insane. It would have been a completely different story, I think. One of the guys had nine smokes. Nine. But they actually, on it, for me, I actually feel like they kind of overused them a little bit, but they wanted to be comfortable. They were overlapping. They wanted to make sure that they just spread out because they knew their nades were going to hit them. It was a little overused, but I would argue AHQ on that tree with the high ground had a direct shot at them while they were on the road. Mm. Creating that smoke wall let them run up and down, have mobility to fight against C9 and lock up the north side of the circle. That's how you do it. That's the right way to play with the smokes. Very yeah. impressive stuff there. And 4AM managed to get themselves a chicken dinner in game number two. And these are the highlights brought to you by the Premier in Graphics and Video. Plenty more stuff to be talking mm. about here when it comes to that game as a whole, though, because we saw teams, for me, like 17 Gaming, great scouting out towards the end of those final circles, tried to go straight across the circle to find themselves some cover. However, it really didn't work out for them. And they were in a brilliant position from some of those circles, Toffees, to try and get themselves into a better position later. I mean, 17, regardless of how they ended up doing here, has impressed me. They still wrapped up five kills. They got the shift away from them. Mm. They actually used information. They saw two teams try to grab the spot where 4AM was hiding. Both got pushed off, so 17 made a hard choice. Do you push 4AM or do you make the long rotation? They made the long rotation, unfortunately, mm. it didn't work out. But that's one of those moments, right? Six one way, half a dozen the other. You're taking a fight, maybe they just chose not to fight 4AM. And actually, ultimately, Avenger, let's take a look at the process of how the circle kind of evolved throughout mm. this game, because we started with a very similar circle to game number one. However, we did not end up in a similar situation, truly, to game one. No, there's multiple kind of situations where you see where teams have to decide which side of the road they have to be on, because the roads determine so much in this area here in the northern side. Yeah. What is really interesting to me is how 4AM managed to stay on the eastern side, even though in this circle, as you see right here, the majority of the circle was on the western side, so your biggest bet would be go over there. But here, where they really played it well, they stay, they stick on the north, where it was really kind of far away, and then they sent two guys down to the south, because there's so many teams mm. on the north, and they took so much control, and third party so many fights in the north. That's the important part. Insane control. They yes. had across the, uh, I think it was maybe fifth to sixth circle, mm. crazy amounts of presence there to deny many teams from being able to take any spot. And I think because the circle went north right out of the gate, it caught a lot of teams off guard. And we saw mm. that with the score differentiation. Last time, 28 kills went to the top four teams. This time, teams were getting cut out almost start like starting at Circle yeah. 2. Liquid had to make a choice of playing Edge at the beginning of Circle 2 because they just couldn't chase it. So for that reason, we see 13th, 12th, 11th, 10th place. They all got four kills each. Mm. So that puts them in a good point position. Yep. They'll actually, honestly, have as many points as I think almost sixth place only got five points. Yeah, so yes. at the end of the day, if you do lose the circle, execute some kills. And speaking of kills, obviously, we do need to actually highlight Cloud9 there, getting mm -hmm. themselves third place, but 10 kills to yep. boot as well. Part of that, going up against SDK, where it's that moment of regional prize, like, no, why are you here? <laughs> yeah. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, so they have to do it, and they have to, to eliminate them to keep themselves in the game. But it just it's a great set of consistency for our first two games for Cloud9 to have a fourth place, decent showing, third place, very decent showing. And they can't be mad about it. They honestly, so AHQ came in second, C9 actually got second place points yeah, more yeah. than HQ because yeah. they realized whether or not we lose this, if we go for those kills, if we get that knock, that fourth person on 4AM, they got the kill there. They did a very good job of executing. And honestly, it came down to the STK C9 fight. Whoever won that comes in third place. And honestly, if they had never fought, if one of those teams hadn't been there, I think maybe we see a different winner this time mm. around. Oh, on top of that, if they even fought and won with three guys mm. alive, if they had three yeah. guys alive on that high ground position, they would be able to look over the brow of the hill there and completely wipe out 4 
Also remember, 4AM got that second player with a beautifully and kind of lucky nade because they had no information on where C9 was. That nade got a knock that allowed 4AM to crest the hill and sort of finish off yeah. C9. Yeah. So 4AM played that very well, but you're right. If a third player had been there, they could have gone for a safe res. They sure. could have covered the line, and maybe C9 comes out on top. And we can take the magnifying glass away here for a moment and take a look at how 4AM was able to kind of truly solidify them spot in towards the final moments here and how they were able to actually win out the game with already some very good shots to start things off against where 17 Gaming had to transition to and then defeating one of the bigger spoilers in OP Gaming Rangers. What we saw here just, just to begin with was where they transitioned away from the north and down to the south and then they third party and then kind of yep. attacked everyone that was stacked up in the north because we saw eight players on the north there where they're just kind of third party and making sure that they're taking control even though they had a team to the east, uh, I believe there's still a guy alive to the south as well. They managed to go down there safely with two guys and just completely ruin it for everybody on the Northwestern side. And it was a good control. They're an aggressive team, but to be honest, they got 12 kills. Half of them came from sort of the winner's bonus, right? They yeah. cleaned up C9, they cleaned up 17, they got a couple other people knocked out, AHQ. Prior to that, they played patient, slow, placement style PUBG, and that's exactly the same thing Liquid did in the last game. They yeah. said, okay, circle's on us, we're yeah. gonna play a very different way than if it wasn't, and that's exactly what we're gonna see. Teams that do get middle are gonna be nice and quiet, and the teams that don't are gonna look for those four to six kills. Can it be difficult to play the low ground situation against high ground? Obviously, Cloud9 was kind of up there, mm -hmm. 4 a.m. They had a very uh, severe spread, I want to describe it as, but obviously the dip into that road is very, very low. Fighting up that position, is it, is it difficult in PUBG? So yeah, you know, that, that hill especially, yes. like it was literally vertical, right? But what was really mm. interesting to, for me to see was how they moved their, down there once they knew that it was in a spot where they could have their back safe because yeah. that's the blue zone, and then kind of their sides were safe as well. So they could just focus on the south side and kind of on the sides as well. I well, think traditionally, the only way to win an uphill fight is if you are 100% concentrating on that mm. uphill, yeah. right? Once the uphill has the peak executed, they have a huge advantage. The smokes were key. They blocked the entire vision of everyone else on the map towards them so that all th three players could literally just stare at the ridge line sure. until it was safe. And that's where the execution came in. Well, before getting into game three, I am getting word now that we do have Frankie ready with AHQ, who got themselves second place in that previous round. I do indeed. I'm joined by SR from Taiwan's AHQ, and we've also got Nelson from PUBG Corp, who's going to translate for us. Now, first of all, I'd like to ask about that Northeast Circle, because it's quite similar to match one. So did you learn anything from the opening round? In the second round, Okay, and we learned from the mistakes from the first match that uh, we have some turnovers in the first one. So in this one, we do it very carefully. And luckily, I was able to sneak out like in the, in the, in the final rounds, like being invisible. So uh, it's, it's kind of lucky, but uh, we, we, we did learn from the mistakes. You weren't entirely invisible though, SR, because you did get a kill. So how did you judge when to stay silent and when did you judge when to frag? 你其实有拿到击杀吗 Okay, it all, uh, it all depends on the standard procedure, like our precision. So if there is more cover, so we'll just stay, uh, we'll just stay there. But if it's not, we need to keep moving. But um, I will, if there's any chance, we'll just seize it, yeah. And finally, you came up against the four angry men. That must be quite intimidating when it's 3v1. Did you think there was any chance of you taking that chicken dinner in that round? Uh, 
Okay, to be honest, uh, there was a very good chance when they were the one of the foreign member, he was DBNO, but I didn't, I didn't uh, get, get the kill. So, um, so in the finals, it become 3v1, but not 2v1. If it's 2v1, I think I can do it. Yeah. Well, hopefully next time you're in that situation, if you end up like that again, SR, you will emerge victorious. Thank you so much for talking to me, Shashay. And we need to head to a break, but we will see you on the other side.